Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. herself was sterile, for he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. <coughs> so it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sands on the seashore. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to you. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will be your heart. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants to whom the master finds vigilant on his return. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, Blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let him break into the house. You also must be prepared, for in an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming, and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk. Then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour, and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accordance with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will, but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Our Lord and his disciples urges his disciples to always be vigilant in awaiting his coming. The people of the early church expected Jesus to arrive at any moment during their lifetime. As the years passed, Christians saw that more and more of their number had died without experiencing the second coming of Jesus. The apostles thought that Christ would indeed return and those who had died would be raised from the dead. Ever since the earliest days of the church, it is taught that God created us as whole persons, with a body and a soul. And so we believe that Jesus will come to restore our mortal bodies to be like his resurrected body at his second coming, known as the Last Judgment. It has been nearly 2,000 years since our Lord left this earth and ascended into heaven. And during the past centuries, there have been many people who have predicted the date of his return. So far, all of them have been wrong. After hearing again and again that the end is near, people have been become desensitized 
to the fact that Jesus will return one day. He could return this year or a thousand years from now. We don't know. That's why Jesus told his disciples, you must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. The way people behave today, it's clear that they don't expect Jesus to come anytime soon. In today's Gospel, Jesus warns his disciples not to become complacent while awaiting his return. Even though we haven't seen Jesus come yet, that doesn't mean that we won't see him soon. While it is true that Jesus has not yet come on the clouds, each person has an appointed time and day to stand before Jesus and give an account of his or her stewardship. For at death the human body ceases to function and the soul is summoned to be judged. A person's life on earth is finished, and it becomes the basis for his or her judgment. This is called the particular judgment, and there can only be two outcomes, heaven or hell, for all eternity. Those who die in a state of grace are destined to go to heaven. Some of these may have to pass through a time of purification that we call purgatory. This is a time to make up for the temporal punishment we owe for the sins that we have committed. Those who die in a state of mortal sin condemn themselves for an eternity of separation from God, a state of existence that we call hell. Sometimes we need to be reminded about living in reality. And the reality is death heaven, hell, and eternity. We need to remain alert and sober about what lies ahead for each one of us, and not to get so preoccupied with the daily rat race that we lose sight of what is most important for each of us. St. Francis of Assisi contemplated the reality of death as he faced his own passing. And he composed the end to the famous canticle to Brother, Son, and Sister Moon. It ends this way. Praise be to you, my Lord, through Sister Death, from whom no one living can escape. Woe to those who die in mortal sin. Blessed are they she finds doing your will, for no second death can do them harm. St. Francis had a mind of a servant who looked on the world as a gift from God. He purposely embraced evangel evangelical poverty. The love of God was everything to St. Francis, and so, so much so that he renounced all material goods in his life. For him, evangelical poverty freed him from material things that he might draw his attention to God and God alone. St. Francis took Jesus at his word, as the Gospel tells us, do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell all your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Many people thought that St. Francis' commitment to evangelical poverty was extreme. And yet, that heroic commitment to the gospel is what drew thousands to follow his example over the years. But Francis was only copying the lifestyle that the original Christians lived, as we read in the Acts of the Apostles. They continually devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and to prayer. And all those who believed were together and had all things in common. And they would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's needs. Well, the church today carries out 
this same tradition that the early Christians had. We still devote ourselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the breaking of the bread, the mass. And we share what we have to support the church and to those in need. When you get your packet of envelopes every month and you see that there are various envelopes for different charitable organizations. There's even an envelope there for ICC charities. This is a convenient way that we can do the work of the church in supporting those in need. We can also store our treasure in heaven, not only by giving alms to the poor, but through our prayer and our sacrifice, by visiting the sick, by helping those in need, maybe giving someone a ride to the grocery store or to the doctor. And all, all these things are important because they are a sign of us being followers of Christ. We do these things for the love of Christ. And because of that, we have treasure in heaven. Jesus taught us during his lifetime about the two greatest commandments. The commandments that sum up all the other commandments. He taught his disciples... You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Detachment from material things helps us to love God with all of our hearts, mind, and soul. It also helps us to address the needs of our brothers and sisters, our neighbor. We all should have the mentality of steward, servant stewards. Everything that we have comes as a blessing from God. And so all that we own is only on loan to us for the few years that we walk the earth. After that, if anything is left, it will go to someone else. We take nothing with us except our good works. The temptation is to put off doing good work, God's work, for tomorrow. For many, there will be no tomorrow. For who knows the time and the day of their own death? It is better that the Master should find us busy going about and doing his work. In today's Gospel, Peter asked Jesus if the parable is for the apostles or for everyone. And Jesus answered, Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. All of us who hear the gospel are responsible for following it. That is our mandate. Those who are placed in authority in the church are going to be held at an even greater standard because they have been given and entrusted much more. When you think about it, we are members of a, a society that is probably the most affluent in the world. And so, because we have much, we are expected to share what we have with those in the world. So, in the end, may the Lord find us wide awake and vigilant at his coming, so that when we are called before him, he may say to us, well done good and faithful servant.
faith we are called to obedience, to hope, and to be ready to welcome Christ at any hour. Let us intercede for others with a sense of that faith. For the Pope, bishops, priests, and deacons who serve and lead the household of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For world leaders who one day must give an account of their work to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, For respect and care for God's creation and the environment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For faith that looks forward to an eternal city founded, designed, and built by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For those who are ill, especially Lauren Landgraf, Father Smith, Dixie Barron, Michael Weston, Juan Ibera, Chuck Dennis, and Danielle Bradford, we pray to the Lord. Lord. And for those who have died, especially Barbara May, and also for Stephen Sisolak, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Eternal Father, we do not know the day or hour when your Son will return as judge. Look upon our prayers as signs of faith in his coming. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.